Hi everyone and the music community. I'm going to show you how to teach a beginner student. So when you're teaching a beginner student, the first thing you should be doing is teach them how to curve their fingers. And of course, find out where middle C is. Play a game with them. So, Isabel. Say hi, Isabel. I like, Say hi, Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. So, Isabel, I want you to find middle C. It's located in the middle of the words. Find two black keys and it's the note on your left. Isabel, play the note and then your student will hit it. Then you tell your student, close your eyes, look up, look down, look left, look to the right, open your eyes, where is it? Over here. And if they can't do it, you can crack a joke, laugh at them, and then say, all right, if you can do it the next time, I'll give you a high five. Yep, make it very fun and engaging. Now, the next thing you need to do is teach them how to curve their fingers. So we're gonna do something called the five finger exercise. Five fingers on the keys. Touch each one and push all together. Now you see these, bring the camera closer. You got these lumps coming out. We call these joints, these are your ligaments. And you notice young kids, they're very loose. Yeah. So start poking each one to get it nice and strong. Do you wanna push this one for me? Push my finger, yeah. So not this one, this one here, push it. So if it bends, push, splat. You can say splat, or you push it, and you can splat. <laughs> so give me a splat, Isabel, push, go. Splat. Yeah, and that should make the child giggle, because it's very funny. Now over time, when their fingers become really strong, you can go five fingers down, and lift one finger and play three times. Next finger, three times. Notice how all the other fingers are strong and curved. Next finger. Next finger. If they struggle, let's say they try to lift their finger four up and the other fingers come up, you can help the student out by pushing the other fingers down. So parents can do this too. And you see, my finger four is lifting. If your child's hands are small, well, what you can do is one finger at a time. So only finger two, push the joint. Finger three, push the joint. Don't forget to do the left hand as well. And of course, one finger, one finger, one finger, and one finger. Make sure these fingers aren't bending. You will have to keep hassling your student and poking them, I say annoying them to make it more funny, to make sure the fingers are strong. Now, moving on, we're gonna learn how to read notes, and this is where it gets really fun. So, we use flashcards. These are our newest Muso flashcards collection, so get them and use them. So how do you make them really good at note reading? We help you out, you see. We even say how to practice. Check this out, look. So over here, we teach you. We say place five notes side by side, C, D, F, G. Yeah, and the teacher teaches notes in ascending and descending order. So we're very specific. We teach you how to use the Muso way to practice with your child. So let's do a bit of it. And here's the fun part, we got flashcards too. With the keyrings. So there's two of them. One and two. I'm sure the kids are better than parents at opening these. We should do a test later on with our kids, that'll be quite funny. So we get the parents to try opening it and get the kids to try. We'll see if the kids are better. So you see our keyring, we just push it up and they automatically open. So if I'm practicing with a child and I want to make it easier for them, I'm not going to put the hard stuff in. I'm just going to put some easy notes in. So we're going to use our treble clef and we're going to go D, E, F, G. And let's find our middle C. Middle C is hiding somewhere. If it's not here, it's probably somewhere down the pack. Look for another blue card. Oh, it looks like we don't have a middle C. Unless it's hiding. Might be hiding in this pile. Oh yes, and I found it right here. So it should be the first one actually. So we can edit that out. I didn't want to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> and fast forward that part. All right, there we have it, C, D, E, F, G. We're gonna lay it out in front of the child 
and we're going to point at the first one and say, where is middle C? Ask the child to say it out loud, C, C, and then you play it. This next note, D, E. Notice how I play after I say it. Make your child do this, F and G. Use the right fingers to do it as well. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Again, faster, C, D, E, F, G. Now for the young toddlers, this is where it gets really cute, because some of them just don't know the alphabet. So what you can do with them is you sing with them. A, B, C, D, don't make me do this by myself, Isabel, come on, go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and stop. Then you say to the toddler, can we do the same thing, but we start on C. A, B, C, D, E, e F, G. G. And once they can do it, then you can do this with them. Yeah. If they can't even sing the alphabet, it's hopeless. Mm -hmm. Don't even try, okay? Make sure you know the alphabet first. All right, this way it gets more fun. Please, I know a lot of teachers do this, they teach Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, I would not recommend this. C, D, E, F, G. Because you want them to process the letter name, the mm -hmm. note name. You don't want them to process Do, Re, Mi. I've seen mm -hmm. teachers do that and the students come, their note reading is, is not there. So please, C, D, E, F, G. All right, how to make it more fun. So, it's about come up. You're gonna point at a random note and I have to try to find it. I'm the student. Point at a random note. So, teach your child how to count. C, D, and this must be a E. Point at another one. C, point at another one. Now let's make it more fun. We're gonna shuffle the cards. So, I'm the child, I can't look, and Isabel, the teacher's gonna shuffle the cards. Three, two, one, finish. So, tell your child you have to reorder them so that it's in order. This part is really fun. So, they should be able to do it. If they can't, you will have to help them. So, C is in the middle. The next note up, as you can see, bring the camera closer. The next highest note must be this one. This is too far up, too far up, too far up. The next note up is this one. This is higher than that one, right? So, next one up. Is here. And this is so effective because it teaches your child to know how to count the notes on the way up. So then we can do something more fun, which is we put them in our special key ring here. C, in, D, in, E, in, F, in. So you can see, right, it's so new that there's still a bit of that bubble. You can just poke through it. And then G in. All right, close your key ring. For safety purposes, please don't let your young toddler do it. You close it yourself. And then you start doing it for them. What is this note? What is this note? And they have to say, it's an F. And they have to play it on the piano. Next note. This is our, it's about what is it? E. It's an E and they have to play it. And next note, what is it? D. And they have to play it. Yep. And once they get pretty good, you can start shuffling the cards. Hands up, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. What's the question? Uh, if I'm a parent and I don't know how to read music, how do I know which flash card is which? That's a brilliant question. So we look at the very back of the cards <gasps> oh. and it even tells you where the note is. So it tells you this is middle C and where the E is and just make sure your child is calling out E. For example, Ooh. what is this note? Call it out. You can make a mistake if you uh, can. F. So I can see behind it is not an F. It's a D. Oh, it's a D. And if your child plays the wrong note, you can see that it's the wrong note because middle C is here. Oh, okay, C. So there's a word middle here. Yeah. And, and then it's after, it's a D after. Next to it. Okay, Exactly, it. yeah. Okay, so it becomes really effective in learning up your cards. Once you get very good at these five notes, that's when you start adding on new notes. So you can see our pile, you can add on the rest of the notes from the treble clef. Mm -hmm. See, we've got A right here. Add this on. You can add on the B and a C. Then once they get pretty good, we recommend introducing the bass clef. Yeah. 
and eventually the high octaves, low octaves. But this is a week by week thing, which we were going to release soon on how to do it in systematic format week after week with your child. All right, and moving on, we usually do pieces. Do we? No, we do our fingering tests. So this is how we teach our students how to use the right fingering. So you put out your hands, tell your child to do it as well, put out your hands, and then you can even label it. You can put one here with a marker, two here, three here, four here, and five here. So it is in contrary motion. So let's wiggle our finger ones. Yeah, put your hands a bit higher so the camera can see it, finger ones. Then wiggle our finger twos. Yeah. So be patient with your child. And, if, and then wiggle your finger threes. Some kids are very cute. They struggle to wiggle a finger. And then wiggle your finger fours. And then fives. Now play a game with them. So let's say wiggle your right hand. Finger two. Yeah. Or wiggle your left hand. Finger four. So from the camera, I'm probably doing it with my right hand, but this is actually my left hand, okay? And this is my right hand. Yeah, and wiggle your finger fives, both hands. Yeah, make it more fun. Wiggle your right hand finger two and left hand finger three at the same time. See, so essentially you're teaching them how to wiggle the right fingers. I can't do it. And if they can't do it, you, you laugh, yeah. You just teach your child two and three. The reason why we say laugh at them, we don't mean in a mocking gesture, we mean in a very fun way. So children can embrace, oh, my mom or my teacher is, is laughing when I make a mistake. So you help them understand it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. So between ages four and eight, we recommend being very funny and laughing when they make a mistake, just to help them understand it's, it's not the end of the world if they make a mistake. Yeah, that's part of life. And usually when they hit eight years old and onwards, that's when you can be more strict and stern with them and let them know they have to do better. And moving on, we would do three pieces from one book, beginner book, and two pieces from another book. So generally we use the Thompson's books. We use Thompson part one, we do two pieces from there, and we do Bastion's book, and we do three pieces from there. Okay, great. And after, two weeks, three weeks, once the flashcards and fingers get really strong, you can start introducing scale. So don't forget to start with C major scale. Great, thank you and that's the end of our video.